going live now. <coughs> Can't hear the track though. Jay's um, track is not playing. I know, but I'm wondering about... Um, let's just go microphone dark.
All right, so quit out of Discord setting this up. Oh, sorry, quit out of OBS setting this up and then went back in and my camera's gone really dark. So sorry. Sorry, I'm a little bit dark here, but um, at least it still works. Such a rookie when it comes to live streams. But um, welcome and good morning. Uh, it's uh, early here in Sydney, 7 a.m. Um, I've got Toby in the chat too. It's uh, getting quite late there in England, Tobe. It is, what is the time? 10 o'clock in the evening. 10 o'clock in the evening. So you're getting the best of both worlds here. You're getting uh, Australia, um, the convict colony, and you're getting the motherland. Um, and we've, Toby and I have been working on this bike. Uh, fun fact, Toby, Toby and I have never met in person, but we, we're like old mates. Um, we probably so, find out if we meet in person, we'll hate each other. Yeah, we had a laugh the other day. He said, <laughs> imagine if we were like in some different world, we, were, we ended up having to live together and we hated each other's guts. <laughs> It's like, oh, he always leaves the toilet toilet seat up. <laughs> uh, um, but anyway, it's going to be a bit of fun because, um, you know, I do modeling every Saturday morning anyway and every other day. But um, And Toby's doing modeling pretty much every day as well. I've been working on this bike and we thought it'd be fun to do a bit of modeling and share it with you uh, as well. So what I'll be able to do is switch between Toby on Discord and, and me here and um, we'll just work away and you can watch us um, uh, as we work. I can actually go um, uh, full for Toby. So we can see Toby's screen there on Discord. You can see Toby will be working on that engine. Makes me feel like a beginner. I makes me feel like all I can do is make cubes and spheres when I look at Toby's work, which is good. It's like, it's like um, you know, fitness train. He's like a fitness trainer. Makes me makes me a better modeler. Um, we can also view side by side, so you'll be able to you know, take a look at um, what we're doing side by side. I know it's really small on the screen, but um, hey, you know beggars can't be choosers. So I might um, uh, actually, Toby, are you ready to go? I might I might switch over to you first. You're not ready. Okay, so Toby's not ready. He's born ready okay why don't you why don't you talk okay i'll kick i'll kick I, I, that's okay i'll i'll kick things off and then you get ready to show us um what you've been doing on that engine okay all right no worries so uh i've done a, a number of different things in, during the week I've, if you follow me on twitter i um i have been um just giving sort of like updates on Twitter and Instagram um, and just turn on everything so we can see it. So obviously in Blender, um, Tobe and I were talking yesterday about how we don't <laughs> we don't miss our previous piece of through our modeling software. Um, call I guess you, we should say the name Cinema 4D. Um, <clears throat> we don't miss that. We've, we're pretty comfortable in Blender now. Um, which is fantastic. I'm so glad about that. Um, now, during the week, I worked on... Um, let's just come back to the other side. Uh, I might turn a few things off in here. We don't need everything. Uh, I'm going to press Shift Space just so I can see the wireframe. Just turn off your bits. Turn off my bits, yeah. Now, I'll turn <laughs> off... I'll, I'll just keep all the good bits on. They're all my bits. Um, so I've got a bit of Toby's engine in there. He'll, he'll be talking about that in a moment. Um, I think if if I mean I've done a little, I've done part of the engine, but not um, only a small part. I think if we hadn't done if Toby hadn't finally joined the party just recently, it'd probably be a bike without an engine. <laughs> I'd just probably I'd probably put a few spheres and cubes in there. Um, well, weirdly, this all started actually. I mean, we started this in May last year. Last year. I thought it was July. I mean, I've, got, I've got I've got Cinema 4D files going back to May, I think. Okay, all right. I, mean, so... I, I could check that. But anyway, anyway, I mean, it was just like preliminary kind of bits and bobs, you know. Yeah, well, I I thought it was July, but that, that's um... but yeah, it's 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 only um been in the last sort of six weeks that we've been hitting it hard hitting it hard and really and really making good progress yeah but it was actually a really good project for us to switch across to blender 
I I was yeah. ten, I was tentative. I I was kind of jumping in in and out of Cinema 4D, and you know taking copious notes of you know what what are the comparative um, um, shortcuts and techniques. And Tobe just went two weeks full on, <laughs> just jumped yeah, into I, it. I, I, I did a bit of a Leroy Jenkins and just went. <laughs> It just went straight in, and then he kicked, then then I then I was speaking to him like the, the, after the second week and going, oh, I got to take a break. I'm getting burned out. <laughs> like I'm the, I'm the sort of slow and steady kind of guy. Toby's just like the boots and all. Um, but it's, it was actually really good because we were catching up um, around this time every day and sharing what we'd learned. Um, so it's been really actually quite good to do it together, and both of us. I mean, we still have things to learn in Blender, obviously, but, you know, as far as modeling goes, but um, obviously a lot more comfortable now, <clears throat> just after three or four weeks. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I've noticed myself settling into a pattern um, and not really kind of branching out with new techniques just because I'm just brute forcing it at the moment. Right. So I, I'm not working the fastest way I could. I'm, I'm just trying to get the stuff done do you know what i mean yeah yeah totally and i think that's a good a good way to do it as well whereas i'm a, i'm being a little bit more um i don't know refined about it I'm, yes. I'm i'm looking at the tools i'm trying to find the right tool um i'm looking at add-ons like for example this week when i was working on this um this belt and just press the um backslash key just to solo that Working on the belt, um, press tab to go into edit mode. Um, I had to learn how to use curves, and I hadn't even touched curves in Blender. Um, and then I realized curves are actually super powerful in Blender. It's so, such a delight to um, switch to a piece of software and find tools that are better than the tools that you had you were working with before. Some things aren't as good, um, but many of the things are. Um, so I actually used um, an array and um, a curve modifier. And there's tutorials on YouTube. Just look at, um, look for um, tutorials that talk about um, using um, an array along a curve on YouTube. There's plenty, plenty of stuff. I watched them this week. Um, so I used a curve and created this from us from one small piece of this um, uh, belt now the belt itself if you have any questions just let me know the belt itself <clears throat> started as a piece of the um, rear pulley so if i just hide the belt i'm going to press the move my cursor over the outline and press the period key and that will just um scroll to the first active <clears throat> so what i did was i grabbed um a section of this because i'd already built this um pulley so I grabbed a section of this. Let me just press tab and tab again. Three to go into um, polygon mode or face mode. So I grabbed a section of this um, and then I split it off. And then I basically inverted it. Come back into tab. And that became the basis for the belt, um, which I've just turned off. Let me just turn that back on. Belt tooth, there we go. And that became the basis for the belt. So I built one one little piece of the belt tooth, um, and then I um, um, ran it along a curve using an array, and then I collapsed that down and um, just did a bit of an inner extrude around the outside just to just to give it a little bit of sharpness around the around the outside. So you know, pretty simple, but it was pretty straightforward to do that. It wasn't as, I'll be totally honest, it wasn't as straightforward using um, an array and a curve object as it is in, say, Cinema 4D using MoGraph. Um, using MoGraph, the object will just snap straight to the, to the spline. But with Blender, you have to actually put your origin on the spline and then snap your objects to the same origin and then it'll work. Otherwise, it's way out in 3D space. So there's a little, there's a few more steps to do in Blender. Um, but once you do that, it's all pretty much the same. <clears throat> yeah, so it's like a circular array, isn't it? You know, like yeah, 
use, so using an empty as a as a pivot point for the yeah absolutely same thing so a couple more steps for in vanilla blender um, i'm sure there's add-ons that make it faster the same with the um not the ffd what is it the lattice you know setting up the lattice is a little slow but then there's a there's an add-on that does it instantaneously so generally there's seems to be add-ons that allow you to do things like this week um when I was working on this, um, um, on the exhaust, I grabbed an add-on that allowed me to do, and if you're using Cinema 4D, doing chamfering on curves, because um, you can't do that in the in the vanilla version. So generally, there's something for everything. Um, so that was the belt for me. Then I moved on to the exhaust, which I'll show you in a moment. For now, I'm going to just switch across to to Tobe, and Tobe's going to talk a little bit about what he's been up to. What the, the hellscape <laughs> of... <laughs> well, tell us, tell us the approach, Tobe, because you've actually been, um, you, you don't have any, you don't have any guide images. There's no like top side, really front images, is there? You've been using reference well, images. Well, that's not entirely true. Well, we've got a front I image, have. right? I mean, I have, um, you know, this old image here, which I think is an earlier model, but it's the kind of the same engine. Um, yep. And that, it's one of these. Yeah, and I, I have the same reference image that you do. Yep. So I can kind of see where stuff is and where it needs to go. Um, now, like you say, that's just a 2D image, though. So I'm having to work off reference. Yeah, because it's all that detail, all that all that detail inside. Yeah. So, so I mean, I found a couple of like eBay posts where somebody's selling the engine that has loads of photos of it. So I'm kind of, you know, lining stuff up to those reference images and then working off the. Um, the you know the the actual photos for the depth information like this this section at the back um this this edge here was originally in line here um but i noticed that this part was kind of curved or kind of bled into this surface yep and i ha i had to kind of reshift all this and move it back um just based on what i was seeing from the photos right know. so there's, there's a fair amount of eyeballing right yeah i mean and i think as long as it at the end of the day as long as it kind of you know i'm not trying to make some scientifically correct um you know it was very difficult to see what was going on inside here you know i think these little nubbins here need to be bigger so i'm gonna have to work out a, a way yeah. to I was going to say that, Make but they looked a, a bit bigger. small to me. Well, yeah. <laughs> Show us the wireframe, Tobe. Um, okay. So you can see I've still got some gaping holes here where I haven't quite got there yet. But um, uh, where's my wireframe? So you've been you've been you've been blocking this out and retopologizing. Yes. There isn't really any other way, is there? I mean. I, I couldn't imagine just building this from polygons without having something no, to build onto. I, I think that's 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 impossible. I you, think. You'd be mad. Yeah, you, you have to pre-plan. You know, so I kind of built these shapes very roughly, of using some booleans and just joining stuff together, just to get the shape going. Now I don't know if I have that in this file. I don't think I do actually, but you can see here um, if I just hide all of this, this is my what I'm going on top of for the for the block. Are you using any of that um, original guide as final topology? Are you, no. Are you, no. No. It's just I'm just smashing shapes together. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this is your regular, well, you know, 
you know, if you want to make a shape, you just smash it together. And I'm not worried about that because you using booleans. Yeah. So mm. all of this is balled out. You know, I, th this is all very, very um, simplistic, but it just gives me an idea. You know, I took a bit of time down here to kind of get this looking like I wanted to. Mm -hmm. This actually all came out of Cinema 4D, actually. Mm -hmm. I, this is what I built, uh, you know, ages ago. Um, so I'm just literally going on top of that. Do you generally keep um, your sorry, Todd? Do you generally keep your bulls live, um, even when you're retopologizing, in case you need to slide things or move things, yeah, or do you collapse them? Look, I've got, a, I've got a, you know, a cutters. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. Yeah. So like this, um, if I just hide that, this cut out here wow, is yeah. what is what this is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's all very, um, you know basic and you know rudimentary and you know terrible but that's but the point right it's doing the job yeah mm. i mean i i'm not keeping any of it although i think the you know the final version would look really good with that yeah know, huge thing right there yeah yeah so that's my kind of plan and it's the only way you can do it because it's the only way you can mentally envisage what it is you're supposed to be doing of course I mean, just pulling that, pulling, you know, this out of thin air it would be impossible. Yeah, you know? it would be. I, I have enough trouble with just even some of the sm other smaller parts of the bike. Uh, yeah. I think um, I think modeling um, just from reference images without having the physical object in your hand, and I've said this before, without having the physical object or without having guide images, top, side, front, is the hardest kind of modeling. It really is. Mm. And also about modeling with clean uh, topology as well. Yeah. I mean, this is, you know, once you've got the shape, you can, you know, like these sections here, this is all pretty much the same thing, just extruded out and fitted with a bit, you know. Mm -hmm. And it looks, it looks hyper complicated. Yeah. But, you know, you have to realize that, you know, these are all separate bits, you know, yep. and it, it's not. What, it's not a single mesh, you know. Uh, but it, but even one of those meshes, I mean, like that, like yeah, that top I mean, that top section is, is still complicated. I mean, that is yeah, that, that's the mother yeah, of I all mean, meshes. That's, <laughs> that's um, crazy. But so, this 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 shape was built the same way as I built this, you know. Yeah. So it's it's retopology really, but it's it's not a plug-in doing it. It's me doing it. Yeah. Polygon by polygon by polygon, you know. Yeah. And, you know, if, yeah, you could probably retopologize this in, you know, 10 minutes with a plugin, but it doesn't really teach you much about modeling. No. And, and you're never going to get it quite as clean either. You can in some cases. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, some of it's a bit of a mishmash, and, you know, I wouldn't say it's the best topology I've ever done. But it just comes to a point where you, you're just literally, you got to get through it. Do you, you know just, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you're just trying to find yeah, somewhere if, to put if that. If there's something not perfectly edge. in line, you know, it's like, I mean, look at this section here. This is a right mess. Um, and I could take a load of time to, to sort that out. But that's, uh, see, see, one you know, person's mess, though. I mean, that that doesn't look that messy to me. I've seen I've seen way worse. Well, yeah, but you know it's all quad. You know, there's you and know. following following all on the on, along the the main sort of hard surface guides, right? Don't don't put a triangle or an end gone or a pole on a curved surface. You know, it's okay yes. on a flat surface. Yeah, so I mean, I had one instance here where I had I had to put this in here. And I cut in an edge here, which left a pole right here. Right, on a leading edge, right? And and I was like zooming out and I was zooming out and zooming out and thinking, yeah, I can't notice that when it's really zoomed out. And then I got close to it and I was like, no. Nope. So then I had to cut edges all the way through here. Yeah, and then yeah. I had to come in and loop them round. Yeah. And, you know, that's 
that's a lot of work just to get rid of two poles. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't live with it. <laughs> no, no. And, and it looks terrific. You know, so... I mean, these shapes here, like, so let's say we hide this. Uh, what is this called? This is called thermostat cover. You know, you're not even seeing this. You don't even see this. Well, we told you that, a, but you wanted to yeah, do it. And I spent a day making it, you know. Um, again, same thing. Make the basic shape and then retop over the top of it, you know. But with this, I kind of took my time and, you know, made sure, you know, I had a good edge count on, so everything kind of lined up. When you're doing these booleans, right? Especially when you're booleaning in like a cylinder into a cylinder. Well, I, I often see people doing that, not paying any attention to the, the, the loop count on the cylinder and the edge count that it's cutting into. But you need to yeah. line those up as close as possible to save yourself the yeah, trouble. Yeah, so look, this is, this is a good example here okay of a of a cylinder that's a certain size now as you as you decrease the size of the one you're trying to put in you have to change the edge count and you have what you have to do is change the edge count so you get as many edges as you possibly can lining up yeah you know and if you try to smash this together with this and they have the same edge count you're just killing yourself yeah because you would never be able to um solve it you know no um so you there there are certain rules to you know and there are certain connection you know uh, uh you know there's certain ways to connect tubes together do you know what i mean yeah um, sure um you know uh this section was quite tricky you know, if we look at this <laughs> topologically, you know, I, I had no real idea what was going on here until I found a, a, a sort of a decent image. And that's, that, know, that's, that's a half the battle, right? Yeah, you know, not, not tricky, having an image. That's a tricky shape. Uh, some tricky shapes. Look, I mean, I've got a couple of triangles here. Don't care. You know, I could try to solve that, but why? And it's being subdivided too, so those triangles will actually yeah. be end on be be end on. Those triangles will be quads after subdivision, and as long yeah. as they're not as long as they're not breaking, you know, the model, um, uh, you know, visually, then they're okay. I mean, there's a massive yeah. pole in the middle of that middle section there where your cursor yeah, is. Do you know what that's going to have over the front of it? Yeah, right. One of these. That's right. You know. So you're not even going to see it. But even though there so, is a pole, it's still clean though, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, it doesn't look too bad. No. And it is there yeah, is a tendency to again, be over over perfect with these kind of pieces of um I mean, I, I just tell myself it's a bit of cast cast metal. Yeah. So it's never going to be perfectly. No. Anyway, I've been telling myself <laughs> that throughout this whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's cast metal. Mate. It's, it's lumpy. You know yeah they so, are lumpy that's I mean, right so this is what i'm doing at the moment yeah so where are you up to right now yeah so i'm up to basically here really i mean i mean i just did this yesterday and at the moment you know i'm trying to just get get things done i'm trying to get the mesh done and then i'll go back and clean up because you know you know what it's like you you come back to a mesh a couple of days later and you're like oh why didn't i cut that down here yeah and, you, you literally see things you, know, you didn't see right yeah so that's what's going to happen here i'll probably get rid of all this or or just have a look another look at how i can solve this better you know this is all over the shop but but it still looks pretty clean yeah. and how much of that is actually going to be covered by other geometry most of it, right? Well, well I mean, look. Um, yeah, so a lot of it. But to, but to, yeah. to be to be honest, everyone, Toby is doing the actual engine to this to this level. Um, obviously, the bits that you're not going to see in the final render because it's a it's a it's a personal project as well to have done this engine yeah. in in a lot of detail. 
Yes. So if I was having to, if I was having to make this for somebody and they were paying me by the day, um, you'd be rich. Uh, I, I, well, uh, they just wouldn't pay me. No, so you'd be broke. <laughs> yeah. So you know, I'd have to think of another way to get this done a lot quicker. But I'm not sure what that is. You know, which would be a maybe a, a you know an automated topology situation. You know. But you're never going to get it. I mean, you can clean up auto topology, auto you know auto read topology. I mean, a yeah. lot of I mean, one workflow is is to sculpt it, right? You know, probably someone who's really good at. Um, oh God, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm sure ZBrush would sculpt that. Zebra. Yeah, I'm sure there's ZBrush artists that could make this in five minutes. I don't think so. You know, but well, you know, there's some incredible artists out there. Oh, uh, yeah, and yeah. No, you know, you no, just no look doubt. at some people's stuff and you're like, oh, I don't understand how they're doing that. Yeah. You know? I know. I look at that and I think, I don't understand how he's doing that. <laughs> well, it's just taken so long. Do you know what I mean? It's like I'm really having to... Um, I mean, I've got a bit of spare time at the moment, which is why this has happened. Yeah. Um, but I've got to unwrap it and texture it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well done. Yay. <laughs> Well, good luck. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> it's not going to be. Hopefully, it, well, I don't. Well, really someone said I should just. Get. Someone said I should just whack a shader on it. Someone I won't mention. Oh, but really? uh, no, I'm going to give it the full substance yes. painter. Um, substance painter. Um, makeover. It'll be a vintage bike uh, by the yeah. time it's done. Yeah, it will. <laughs> I wouldn't want to ride it anywhere either. Probably fall apart immediately. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, I'm going to switch back to my screen and um, let's take a look at where um, where I've got to next. Let me just move something over here so I can see what I'm doing. All right. So once again, disregard my camera. It's a little bit dark. So. Did the belt during the week um, and moved on to the exhaust. And I'm actually working on, well, well I'm reworking this section at the moment. Um, Tobe did this. Um, I had to, I found some reference images and once I put the exhaust in, I found that it was intersecting this object. So I had to actually split a whole piece off and I'm just reworked this to, um, to fit correctly. It actually looks like this. It's a really, really lovely piece of um, machinery to model. It's got this big inset in there. I think this was before we'd, we'd found the um, art of finding reference images. Yeah, that's right. And uh, let me just put that out of the way. So I've, I'm doing that at the moment, but I'm, I'm halfway through doing the exhaust. And for the exhaust, let's hit the period, I've used curves um, and let me just solo that. Oops, wrong one. Solo that. So you can see my, there's my curve on the inside there. Um, let me just, let's see, turn off some tab there. This is one of the things I like about Blender with curves. Check this out. You can actually see the points on the curve, even with the geometry. Those of you who don't use, haven't used curves in Blender. So this is definitely one of the advantages. So I can just use the tweak tool here and I can click on a point and just drag it around, which is fab. I really like that. Um, so I'm really enjoying that. Um, what else? Come down to my curve settings down here. Curves also have built-in um, geometry by default. I don't have, I could use, I could sweep something along it if I wanted to, sweep another curve along it. Um, but it has this depth by default. You can just turn up the depth and that gives you your sweep, which is really nice as well. Uh, mine's too big now. Now what is it? Point one oh, I think that's what it was, or point one one. So the settings, it's very deep. Curves can do a lot of stuff. I'm really pleased with it. One thing I couldn't do though was I couldn't chamfer the curve. Um, and people bandied around the word chamfer and bevel interchangeably, but 
in Cinema 4D, when you select a point on a corner and you want to make it into a curve, you can actually select it and choose chamfer. But in, um, in Blender, as far as I could find out, there wasn't any way to do that. So I actually downloaded a free um, add-on um, called Flexi Edit Bezier. So Flexi Edit Bezier allows you to work in object mode. You can see as I roll over the curve, so you can actually see it there. So you can actually do a lot of work with the curves inside of the object mode, which is fantastic. So you just select the point that you want, um, and then you can press, and there's a guide down here, you can press, I think it's um, uh, Control B, and you can bevel those edges, and bevel that point, which is great. And I'm say, I say bevel chamfer interchangeably there. And the only thing I haven't found yet is a way to um, evenly distribute the geometry. In Cinema 4D, you can select the curve, and you can choose things like, um, um, what is it, uh, you know, natural and um, not even. It, you can evenly distribute adaptive. them. Uh, what is it, Tobe? Adaptive. Adaptive, know, yeah, right? adaptive curve. Here, uniform, what you can, yeah. uniform, that's the one I was looking for, uniform. So there's no way to automatically make it uniform, as far as I can tell. But the caveat is that I'm still learning Blender, so there could be a way. But what you can do, um, if I go tab back so i've got the uh, handle here now there's different kinds of handles if i right click i can choose set handle type um, vector will give you sharp points um, and i think i've got mine um, aligned here so i can click on the point to move that around like that or i can click on the handle itself and just move the handle see if i want a free handle because they're aligned right click and choose set handle type uh, free and then if I click on a handle I can break the handle see which is great click on it again set handle type aligned click that and I can see I can drag that in and out and see how that changes the distribu distribution of the bevels of the um, polygons so you've got really good sort of fine the ability to finally adjust so but what I'll what I'll do is I spent a bit of time getting these right. Um, let me just bring the rest of the bike back. Spent a bit of time lining them up to the reference images, um, top and bottom. I'm just holding down the middle mouse button and the Alt key to snap to the different views. I haven't used quad view since I left cinema. Um, so getting these lined up as closely as I can, getting these nice and straight, getting the handles nice and straight. That one's probably not straight enough. You probably want to just you know, straighten up a bit. And once they're perfectly aligned the way I want them, then collapsing them down into geometry, making them editable. Um, and then I just go through and evenly distribute those. I like to get my polygons nice and even, probably an OCD thing. And then what I'll do is I'll, um, um, these are actually the chrome parts of the exhaust. These are joined up. If I just grab my reference image, I'm going to load, um, I'll just save this actually. Engine 2. I want to reload something here. So I'll load in recent scenes, uh, exhaust. So, so the black parts here, these are the covers. You can see if I come in really close, they actually snap on and they cover the chrome. And this is the actual uh, exhaust itself. This one's a bit dinged up. Someone's selling it on eBay. But that was really good to, you know, to give me an idea of how the actual uh, exhaust looks and how thick it is. And you can see this is actually welded. They're welded together. If I look at the inside, where's an inside shot here? Here we go. This welded together. So what I'll do is I will join these two together. And you can see I'm lining up the polygons as well to make that much more easy, um, much easier. And then what I'll do, uh, I'll save these first, duplicate them, then I'll join these together, and then with the dupes, I'll make them wider, and then I'll snap them on. You know, look, make them look like they're snapped on. So two different materials and two different objects. And at the very end, what I'll do is I will ex I will just continue extruding out these uh, mufflers. So they'll just they'll just come afterwards. So that's the plan. I'll just do one muffler.
um, and then I will just copy that down and snap that onto the other one. So that's the plan. Yeah. But but I had to I had to do this first because it was bugging me, and that's what I'm going to be working on now. So I'm going to switch back over to you, Tobe. And uh, I better get into Blender then. Are you? Well, what are you doing? What's happened to my dot? <laughs> well. Cool. I was actually trying to figure out a way that I could actually reduce this poly count. It is very high, yeah. In here. And I'm just looking at this. And I could... I could diamond this up. Could I diamond that up? You gonna, you, did they do that in a radial array? What? How did you do that? Yeah, I did that in a radial array. Unfortunately, I've already kind of... Kind of... Um, Set this so I'd have to probably start again. Why don't you do a lower um, lower poly version of it? Keep that one as a backup. Yes, I could do that. I started with a gear. You know, I just went add um, mesh gear. You know. Yeah. And kind of started with that. Uh, the main factor is is that this um, it's it's I can't actually show you a reference image um, unless I load the reference image up in Blender. But I've got two circles I need to extrude out of here that hold uh, some screws that then hold another faceplate on and some sort of bolt. So I you've mean, got. You're saying you've got that. too many too many loops in there. Well, I think this is probably a little high. There's probably a way that I could. Well, don't don't do that. Do them on the flat surface. Just make some. Just put a just put a loop on the inside, um, yeah. up close, and then make some diamonds and just reduce the loop count. Yeah, maybe I won't attempt that no. right now. I mean, I've still got a bunch of stuff to do up here, connecting sort of this area. What I'm having to do is, I basically on on this structure here, which connects to to this. I I basically extruded it down, and now I'm having to kind of join up. Oh uh, wow. Uh, it's, it's topology. It's, so that's actually connected to that main part. Yes. Well. Wow. So this is where I'm having to solve, you know, this sort of stuff. Would you approach that differently if you did it again? Would you extrude yeah, up? Would you? Would, yeah. <laughs> would, yeah. Yeah. Just walk away. Would you extrude that? Would Would you extrude that up? And then just continue on from there. Would that would have that have made it any easier? No. 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 I think it would have made it harder because you have to establish this shape. First. No, I'm saying, but I'm saying you've you've established the shape. So if you took that and, top and was, edge and extruded it up and then just linked it up to the bits you've already got. Well, they already fit perfectly. Do you know what I mean? It's like. Um, so just you take know, it right up. Oh this, yeah, this, you've got yeah, you've got a leading edge there. Well, you've got it. You've got it. You've got a loop. See up above. You've got that sort of um, move your cursor upwards. Up, 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 up there. Yeah, there. See, you've got that. Couldn't that be the po point where you've extruded up to? No. No. Because on the actual bike, that's not what happens. Uh, but yeah, but this is not the actual bike. Um, because when you get around the other side, that becomes more apparent. Right. Okay, so this detail is going to stop here, and this is going to turn into a flat surface here. Right. So it's, you know, there's going to be a join mark here. 
Okay. You know, and it it will be quite apparent that they're they're different sections. You know. Mm-hmm. So I think this was really the only way to do it. I've got quite a tight area here that I need to work in, and it's going to be quite unpleasant. You should turn off cavities, Tobe, so we can see inside. Uh, okay. Um, where's that? It's here, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I've got this sort of channel that um, needs to be worked in, but... I guess I can hide this, you know, just hide that section. And yeah, so at the moment, I'm just trying to consolidate these these pieces, you know, with this piece while trying to, you know, come around here. And I mean, I could do this bit. You know what I mean? Or, yeah, why don't you why don't you get on with a little bit of it so everyone can see um see how you approach it. Okay. I can kick back. <laughs> uh, oh gee. Okay, I've got well, I've got the workers in. Me? Yeah. Management's gonna have a smoke go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um I mean I could start a new area over here. But then again, I need to know how this is all going to going to come over. Okay, let's let's try this bit here because I've got to do something similar to this here. I need some reference, though. Um, I suppose you're only sharing, uh, yeah, the um, thing. Let me find my reference. Hold on. Yep. Yeah, I'm just sharing Discord, so. Let me see if I've actually got this in. Do you want to spend a couple so of moments? It's, look- it's, 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 a, it's a similar thing, really. I've got, I've got to make a circle. Um, hold on, let me just unhide this. Do you, want to, do you want to spend a couple of moments looking for some reference? I can just keep going with no, mine. No, I've just found it. I've just found it. Okay. So what I need to do, I, I could just draw, get my little annotation tool here. I need to make a circle here with sort of three prongs coming down like this. Yep. A little guy with long arms and two little legs. Yes, yes. That's currently what I look like. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, okay, let's erase that. Is there any way you can? I think I think you got there's a, there's a shortcut. Yeah, hold down shift. I think. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I need to put this onto random as it just helps me. Um, it's a shame you can't turn off the wireframe per object. Uh, I'm not Do not you know aware. What I mean, M- maybe you can. I'm not. I'm, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, I saw a couple of things here in viewport display in cinema you just you'd put a tag on a display tag yeah yeah and you just go guru shading no yep, lines that's right you know yeah, what I mean? that's right um it's not so bad actually once you get into edit mode here you yeah right kind of kind yeah. of see what you're doing we're still discovering all these new tools or ways yes. of doing things yeah so for this i'd probably go into edge mode yeah, and kind of grab. Uh, let me go to tweak. Yeah, let's probably grab this. I need to actually bring all of this out. Actually, just a bit. Let me just. Uh, yeah. Just going to move this out, just so I'm not clipping that. It's not yep. going to disappear under the. Um, so G X to move. I can hold Shift to uh, make a smaller move there, and that's probably good. 
but what I want to do is kind of extrude all this into an edge um, or into an edge loop. So that'll give you a start, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's just the basis. Um, for So that'll do. And I can do that fairly easily using the Q. And I want to do extrude. So that's your quick yeah. favorites. Oh. oh, what's that? So I go QX. And that produces this monstrosity. Because you're nice um, yeah fan so i'm going to go minus 0 0.01 and uh, that should uh, get me started let's try zero, zero, zero. yeah i'm working at really small uh, scales as well which is good because we're working on the same bike yeah in fact um, if I need this to be a circle, right? Um, uh, three, yeah, here we go. Ah, uh, okay. So I obviously made this from a circle to begin with. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yep. I'm not really sure whether that's important. Um, let me try this. I'm still kind of figuring out different ways to um, sort of work here. I can go into mesh or add, and I could go add a circle in here. And you, here. Pu you put the 3D cursor at that point, and that way, if you yes. if you create a 3D cursor, and well, if you move the 3D cursor to a certain point, that's when new objects are created. Yes. So what I want to kind of do is to find something that has a similar edge count here. So what I would probably do is fan this out until I start seeing something that looks something that looks similar. Uh, now the problem with this is that once I move it... You're shit out of luck. You're shit out of luck. That's very true. But I think I might be all right. But you could have used um, uh, Wonder Look, Mesh. There you go. No, you can't use it in... Because I'm in, I'm in edit mode at the moment. So go into object mode. Um... So I don't really want to do that, but this looks like it's actually going to be all right. Yeah. Yep. Um, now I've just got to figure out a way of joining this up. And I could do this. If I were to do this and go auto merge and just hit G until it actually yeah there you go boink isn't that boink. nice um, we hated auto merge when we first started using blender but as long as you yeah you know when it's on and off it's actually really useful Probably want to make that back into a circle. I mean, this circle tool is yeah. just loop, the business. Loop tools. So add on that's yeah. included with Blender. Um, just got to turn it on. Yeah. And the only reason I want to do that is because I need to do this. And I'm going to turn on X ray mode. And I want to align it. To this yeah so i'm just going to go g and i'm just going to move this down so it's pretty much in the center hit i oh, i've done that i've done the um big mistake there where i haven't got my mouse out far enough yeah right if you extrude if you do an inner extrude too close uh, in on the selection it's really hard to um get any sort of traction with the actual size of the extrude you've got to move your cursor yeah. out before you use that tool yeah 
Uh, I'm just going to add a safety loop there, and then I'm going to come back to three, and I'm just going to bin all this. But I don't really need this because I'm just going to extrude it in. So the next step is to kind of so like the other side here, you know, I want some features that are a little bit like this. Yep. There's some prongs that come down. So I'll probably just uh you know grab this edge. I need to be in tweak mode though. My preferred. Oh, yeah, tweak, tweak mode is super handy, isn't it? Yeah, what's going on here? Am I in the right object? Yeah, okay. So, I can just bring... Sort of this over a little bit. And also, I want to have my face snapping on because I'm snapping onto this geometry. And you've still got auto merge turned on? Yeah. And this is going to be, need to be a little bit thicker as well. So I'll just kind of go here like that. That's I love how you do, I love how you work on there. brown models. <laughs> I couldn't, that? I couldn't work on something brown. I don't know what it is. Well, it's the random feature. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't know if it makes me hungry or want to go to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm kind of going between tweak mode and um, and what you call it? Uh, this thing, poly build. Poly build, right? So I've got to a point here where I need I need this edge to join this straight. Okay. So yep. this has got to come straight down and then come across here like this. So I've got to figure out topologically how I'm going to do that. Yep. At the moment that that's impossible to do because I would just have to keep coming down like this and then joining that to there and that's rubbish. That's that's going to fail pretty seriously. Um, so I need to figure out a different strategy, and the, the only way you can do that is to put another edge in. So control really R for edge loop. Uh, that was that was yeah. Come, I'm on a Mac, so that's Command yep. R. Command R. Um, now you'll also notice that I'm not sort of lined up perfectly here and I'm going to have to live with that a little bit um, so again let's go into edge mode and let's just people are probably watching this going oh my god he's doing it a really painful way and you're probably right but it's all I've got at the moment after only using this for six weeks Mm. This is all I got. Yep. Um, but we're always so looking for the faster way, for sure. Yeah, and that'll come when I don't have to think about finishing this, um, and I can sort of. Oh no, that's wrong. I need medium point here. Um, you know, when you've got the time to explore the tools, find out the quickest way to do stuff. Mm. At the moment here, I'm just ripping out topologies. So. Um, that's also not going to work either. Maybe uh, that's too much of a pain in the ass to do. So let's turn off snapping. Let's just bring this out through there. Obviously, you're not always going to have a perfect um, bulled uh, target object. I find sometimes I haven't bulled it perfectly, so I have to sort of make allowances. Yeah. If it's a CAD file, maybe, um, but even CAD files, they can be fraught with problems. Now, actually, do you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to um, get this sorted out. You've got to bring that 
left hand edge got, vertical I've got, edge I've got, thing. I've got I've got I've got to you see I've got a gap here. Yeah, yeah, you've got to bring that other edge to the left of that down. I need to bring all of this or to take that to the left. Hate the way it zooms out like that, but again just having to kind of live with that at the moment. So it's control clicking between selections to to select the uh, shortest path. Yeah, <clears throat> and I just need to I need to get this sitting sort of down here. Now I've got a bit of an issue here because, but I'll come back to that later. I think I can just do like a flatten or something like that. Yep. I mean, I, I could probably come in here like that. You could also disconnect that little widget sticking out and then flatten that and then just reconnect it. Yeah, I'll probably do. I'll probably have to do that. I'll, I'll just dissolve all of this stuff. Oh, that's a good idea too. Yeah. Around it and then just work like that. So I'm, I'm, I'm mucking this bit up for now, but it doesn't matter. I just need something that's going to sit here. Um, so I can get this working. Um, so where was I? QP for my uh, thing. So here I need um, some sort of diamond sort of structure. Yeah, the classic here. diamond in those little corners. Yeah. So I think as long as I've got an edge that's sitting on this geometry here, I should be all right to make this. So that diamond is going to have to start here. Yeah, it's going to be a really tight one, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, and I could fudge the mesh a bit and not bother with that. I could bring it in from this one, move this point down to here or something like that. But um, I need to kind of bring this in like this. Because now I can bring these edges across like this, and then I've got a good, yep, looks good, you know, solid edge that I can then bring out like this, right? And to kind of cure this, I would just go like this and just go straight and take off regular. You know, and then you know, if I wanted to um, make this a little bit neater, you know, start getting things in order. Like, for example, I mean, this could probably come over a little bit. And it's a little bit stretchy, that, but. And you can see if I connect this up. Now you've still got merge. You've, you've still got auto merge on. Oh God, I have, haven't I? What's this? <laughs> <laughs> no worries, Matthias. Catch you later. X, delete vertices. Uh, now you can just do the four, old four. Four, four. <laughs> yeah, four, four, four. <laughs> Machine tools four. Yeah. So that's a little um, free add-on you got that just um, welds vertices, right? <clears throat> that little tool there on the left? Yes. Which I haven't got yet. I mean, the fact that you can... If, if that was in Cinema 4D and that happened, you'd be having a nightmare. Yeah, a little bit a little bit harder. You've got to yeah, feel if, that. If you have a, it. Well, if you've got a hole like this, you know, you've got to bridge it, then cut it, then, yeah. you know... And we're not ragging on Cinema 4D, everyone. We just we just use no, it as a comparison no. because because that's what we've been using for years and years. So if we'd been using Maya or Max or whatever, we'd be comparing it with that as well. Yeah, of course. You know, God, how long did I use Cinema 4D for? For yeah. 10 years? Yeah. You know, it's like... Um, but I do have to say, I, I am liking... Um, what Blender's got to offer, you know. Oh, God. For a free piece of software, 
Unbelievable. So here I need to make another edge coming from here. So I'm just going to, oh, is that already joined up? Kind of a bit hard to see. Yeah, that is already joined up. Okay, so I've got, a, I've got an issue here, or have I? No, I think that might be all right. Uh, where's my poly pen? So I could come in here, posh, like that. So this section I'm going to build now is going to be inset in. This will be extruded back. Yep. This is going to be... Uh, where am I? Let me just go to here. Gonna extrude this down. Oh, now have I selected something I shouldn't have there? Is that gonna be my no, maybe I'll go one edge over. Again, I'm kind of eyeballing this. I'm gonna go at that angle. Yep. And then just kind of bring this stuff in. I mean, it's all pretty boring stuff. Do you know what I mean? It's like, but you're still trying to figure out. So it's like, how do I, how do I um, fill this? Well, yeah, it's yeah. all about edge count and, um, well, it's uh, so all about edge count. Here, hit E. You can see that this, this does a knife cut that hugs this edge. If I want it to hug this edge, I just hit F and I flip it. Yeah, it's a lovely little feature yeah. as well. And then I can get this edge and just bridge over to here. Kind of thing. So that's filled my space here. Now then, so I've got one, two, three edges here. How's that going to work? Start by building up some polys here. Okay. So I could bring this down like this. Be a nice, easy way to solve it. I've got three edges here, so I need to go edge here let's go to you know and just kind of space space these out and then i've got a simple solve where i can just go um, or, you, or you can do your four 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 what's that you can do your auto four Select the select the con concave yeah, point. Yeah, do you know what I, pro I probably could actually? Should we try that? Yeah. Four, four. I oh, know I need to cut this. Four, 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 four. <laughs> oh, look, it lost it. Well, it almost got it. It almost <laughs> got it. Uh, we love we love we love a bit of the old four. So as long, as long as you're getting your, you know, your edge count right, that that's pretty quick. Yeah. And I could go in and smooth this off with a a smooth tool. Do you know what I mean? Yep. So ultimately what's going to happen here is I will um, kind of grab this lot. And then, you know, extrude that back like so. Although, probably turn that off first. Um, you know, this will get set back, which yep. will give the detail. 
Now, I'm probably going to have to think about sharpening this. Yeah, that'd be interesting. So we could cut that in before the extrusion, or you can try to figure it out afterwards. But let's do that now. Um, so uh, to sharpen that, how many edges are we going to need? You know, we could start with an easy one here and go cut in across here. Probably can't see that line. It's a pink line, but yeah, pink on brown. Um, hit E. <laughs> so when you're doing it, when you're doing when you're doing a cut, if you hit E, E will just allow you to do another cut. Yeah. So I'm going to cut in like a you know borrowed edgy kind of business there. And if I um, obviously make that seeable, uh, you can see that. I get um, I get this shape, um, which when I extrude these back, obviously I'm just going to extrude uh, this back again. Um, so I go E X extrude back. Uh, it cuts in the the sharpening edges for you. Okay, so this is one of the good things about um, actually cutting your sharpening in on a flat surface before you do the extrusions. Yep, definitely. Because then it does, or it does all the work for you. Now, I'd have to think about how this edge is going to propagate um, out into here because, you know, I've got an... But you know, it may you may find that I can just loop that back round and join it up here, yep. and then it doesn't have to, you know, propagate out into the mesh. And that'll depend on how many how many loops you need further down there in the rest of the model, right? Yes, but I mean, mm -hmm. I can't I can't imagine. I mean, that I'm yet. working at quite a small degree here, so yeah. In fact, when I get to here, I'm probably going to want to um work on making this a less dense mesh count yeah that's right simplify I mean, it right I, I started with a lot here basically because the rest of this curve you know does this need that many probably not may you know i don't know uh, you know sometimes you you dig a hole for yourself and you just gotta get in it you but know. you are but you are looking further down the model as you're doing stuff you're not just you know willy-nilly um adding extrusions and going oh okay i should have looked up here you know what i mean you are trying to project what you might need further down the model <laughs> if you say so <laughs> oh, well that's what i do <laughs> yeah. I, I, I often i often end up with one extra loop or something which i need to work out where to go and in the end it has to be terminated to a triangle or something but yeah, yeah. as much as possible you're I mean, consider considering the geometry yeah so I, I could try something like this here uh, yeah right and I, 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 I'm going to need a sharpening loop here and weirdly enough actually this actually does create a loop Okay, so check this. If I, if I move this up, I need a loop to sharpen this. On the outside, on the top, right? The, yeah. The bit, yeah, the bit that I'm not extruding. So if I get the knife tool, I've got that right here. Yeah, loop cut. And I could go E and bring this in. Let's try flipping that. No. Um, and there's my sharpening edge for the other side. Yep. Right. So if I just give you an example of that, if I take all of this, and let me just do this, and then I extrude this back. 
all I then have to do to actually sharpen this is just stick a loop here up and then stick a loop here and it's done. Yep. And if I subdivide that and turn off the wireframe, that's sharpened. Yep, very nice. Now that, that that's too sharp, okay, for me. That's that's way too sharp. Um but you know that's how you can cut that sort of topology onto a flat surface and let it do all the work for you. Yep. You know, so I would say that I would probably ditch this edge. Um, and let's see how that works. I definitely need to sharpen here, but then again, that, you know, that may be a little too sharp. For yeah, it me. might be too much. Um, don't know. Let's let's have a look and see how that works. Yeah, maybe you don't need that outside loop. Um, uh, oh look, what's going on here? I'm selecting stuff, and I don't want to be doing that. That's, that's danger, danger. No, it is, yeah, any piece of software, 3D software. Um, so just extrude back. If you have a question, everyone, just, just dump it in the chat. Yeah, so that's going to work for me, I reckon. It's a, quite a I'll danger to um, to make things too sharp. I'm, I'm very guilty of trying to sh make everything look ultra sharp. Um, but you know that that will probably work for me. You know, yeah, especially when you move move back. That's probably perfect. You know, I may even not make this so sharp here. Um, yeah, the main thing is it's super clean. Let's go back to where we were. Um, but that can be done. Let, let's uh, get rid of these. Oh, I need to be in this mode. I'd have to recut this in my mode. Recut my original geometry back in. Don't, don't, back. And right now I'm back to normal. Let's go back to here. Uh, let's uh, read that back. Oh no, 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 no. No. If anyone knows a way that you can going to isolation mode without it moving the camera i'd be very interested to hear that what about can you press um just backslash well that's what i'm doing but it seems to change the view yeah it does it does zoom um uh out a little bit there is a way actually yeah. in there, no there is a way in your preferences to have it isolate but not zoom. Let me just, I'll oh, look okay. it up. While you're doing it, I'll look it up. Hang on a sec. It's one of the tutorials I watched initially. Now, another thing I'm, I'm, I'm looking at here is that this edge is making this too sharp at the top, but I do need this to be split in half here so how do i get rid of this uh let's and tweak mode i uh, just um just hold it there tobe i'll just show you this 
and you can um it'll fix it for you just freeze freeze for a second okay yeah so if you go into your preferences into key map and go to 3d view 3d view global you'll see local view My, mine's keyboard um, backslash but see it says frame selected is checked hold on a minute let's uh, I, I need to look at your stream on discord hold on key map 3d local view 3d global and then go into local yeah. view just look for yeah. the one that's got your shortcut um, and it's got a little frame selected checkbox just uncheck that oh, okay and that will oh, come on that will frame the selected uh, without it um, without it zooming. So P map, 3D view. Yep, 3D view global. global. Here we go. Um, then go to local view. Frame selected. Just uncheck frame selected. That'll stop it from zooming. I oh, know. I've done that and it's still zooming. Oh, okay. All right. That's all I got. <laughs> okay well done okay um, that was good okay back to toby local view yeah if somebody knows that then uh let me know sure um yeah so i've got to get rid of i've got to get rid of this basically so i'm going to get rid of it so how do I? So what have you got to get rid of? So I wanted to get rid of this edge because it's making this too sharp. Right. At the top. But I need this to be able to branch off yep. this. Right. And if you're wondering what this looks like, um here uh, can I, no sorry uh extrude just hold down control and snap it to that point or or not yeah or not what i want to do is just go into object view here uh, god that's annoying uh, so you can see how that will sharpen up, you know, that kind of yep. feature, you know what I mean? Not that it's uh, very nice at the moment, it's a bit pinchy, but sort that out. So what we need to do is get back to solving this, which is to basically get rid of this. And try and cut in here. This is what I want. I want this outside loop to follow down. Yep. Here. That'll make that softer. So, yeah. So, how do I get rid of this triangle? Is the question. Or do I? Or do I just leave it? Um, I can't leave it. Can you take but a loop? This, can you make it into a little dome? Do this, yeah, then right. I get, uh, then I get another triangle. But can you cut right. it? Can you can you cut one to the left of that existing triangle and just take a little loop around the other side? <clears throat> around to here. Yeah. So yeah. So you got you got your existing triangle. So cut an edge. Yeah, on the left hand side of that one to make it into a quad. You know, make it into a little diamond. Here, yeah. And then um this guy here. Uh that that well, that's what not what I was thinking, but I, I was just thinking cut straight down um at the point yeah. of the at the at the point of the triangle. At the very point of that triangle. Yeah, cut down from there to the left. Yeah, yeah, well, no, not that far. Not that far. Just carry that. Oh yeah, I know what you mean. You know, like yeah. split split that loop. Yeah, right. Split that loop now. Yeah, like, but not not the yeah, extra point then though. Then I get a problem. But then I get a problem. You mean come down here like this? Yeah. 
like that. But not that extra point, though. You see, you didn't. But then you, what you do is dissolve that middle point of the existing triangle to make a quad. You make a diamond. Basically, make a diamond out of that triangle. Um, you're talking cutting down from cut, here cut to there here. to there. Yep, cut there to there and stop. Okay, let's try that. Cut there to there and stop. Yep, and then dissolve that middle edge to make a diamond. Yeah, and now I've got an end gone. Where's the end gone? Here. One. No, no, two, no, no. Three. Then you carry that loop. Then you carry that loop around to the other side. Yeah, but then that's going to make this too sharp. So take your inner inner loop around that ring, <laughs> and 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 make it tighter so that you don't have to make it that that as sharp. Or, You've got. Yeah. Anyway, that's my um. It's my two that? cents. Can I do that? And this is the thing, everyone. This is this is the this is the game of, you know, good topology. Game of life. Could I do this? No. Oh, that's annoying. Okay. So what about cutting that um, from that triangle straight to the middle of the circle, and then just redistributing the circle in the middle? Just add an extra loop. Okay. Where? So cut from that cut from that triangle straight in towards the circle, in the middle of the triangle. No, not the top, the oh, middle yeah. of it. No, the middle of the so the left hand side of the, yeah there. Cut there straight into the circle. Yeah. No, straight into the circle to add an extra loop onto that circle. Yeah, bang. So that makes your quad, and now just redistribute the circle. Yeah, I could do that. Because you're not it's limited. Not fun though, is it? I know, but it's still a good solution because you're not breaking anything you're just making an extra loop on a circle that's pretty elegant but if anyone can know a better way you can um, I mean how would I normally do this uh, wrong <laughs> yeah <laughs> God, my yeah my brain's not having it um What can you I've done? I must have done this a thousand times. Carry that all the way around, then just carry that loop. Actually, all... do you know what? Actually, you're you're totally right because it doesn't matter about this section. Just go all the way around. Yeah, like that. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Then you got a quad. So that's, that's actually the way to do it. actually it's like the most. Oh wait easiest solution in, in the world sometimes it can get really complicated you over complicate things and then the, the most oh, yeah, logical way to do it you just can't, you just can't see, see it. it for a moment yeah and i'm often talking so, about in my streams about cutting cutting things in and then you know, or or deleting things and then that reveals the solution yeah because most of the time with these kind of where where curve meets straight um, you wouldn't have to worry about this section being extruded. I mean, you build these kind of shapes all the time. Um, I'll show you an, an example of that here. Um, so stuff like this. But you're not having to worry about any sort of detail in this section. Yep. So those kind of things are really easy to do, you know. Um, but here it's a bit more complex because you've got to worry about this as well. Yep. And, you know, to be fair, you know, we're getting a bit um, carried away going, oh, no, it can't, can't be a triangle there. But there probably could. Well, there uh, could be. But, really but we're doing this as a personal project and we're also always trying to master the art of, you know, polygon modeling and we could easily go oh you could just do this or you could just do that depending on the yeah. situation if you're doing it for a client um as long as it looks right then maybe that's a quicker way to do it you know you've got to make some money yeah. out of it but if you're doing it um for yourself you should be trying to make do the best you can and you know that makes the client stuff even better yeah yeah it's the best way to to learn you know yeah for sure now i mean here i've got this edge coming through here as well 
and you know I could probably get rid of that is there anything down the other at, end of it at some point is there a way I could terminate that into well it's kind of cutting in this section do you know what I mean yeah but at some point I may want to think about simplifying this a little bit but I'll have another look at that um, so with this other piece of geometry here um, I would literally just be copying what I'd done here really yep um, it's quite weird when you've got a load of people watching you and you're making a cock up I know it's you, good. You just can't see it. You can't see what you're doing. It's like yeah, well, I make mistakes all the time, but you get you get better at it. And when you, when you can do actually good good modeling under pressure, when people are watching you, you actually I think it makes you a better modeler. Yeah, this all seems a bit too high poly to me, but um, it just seems like too much of it. Um, but in some ways, you need sure. enough to hold in hold in those corners and those tight corners and. Yeah, I mean, this is quite a, you know, and I, I, although you'll never see it, I mean, if we do a render of the actual engine, um, just the engine, you know, you're going to want to be seeing these kind of details. Um, you know, and you're going to, you're going to want it to look like that, you know, you know. Yeah. Um, it's going to have to be nice to look at. I'll probably delete half of it before I unwrap it. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, we, were, we were just saying like auto merge on and you end up moving it. It'll just like collapses into a singularity of a one vertex. That's right. The whole thing you just know. goes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, this is the everyday thing, you know, it's just like trying to make sense of, you know, I don't like this. No, this that's an ugly. Because it's 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 giving me a crease. Do you know what I mean? You can spread those out though. So, I'm just wondering where this edge goes. Where does this edge go? This terminates at a diamond here. Yep. Is there a way that I can? close this off and get rid of this I quite like it do I need it I mean what I could actually do possibly is just redistribute this whole lot yeah, that's what I would do. Just space them out. Um, so, do you know what I mean? Select the all three and then just use space. Can can you do that? We've got to select. You've got to select the rings. Um, what? Yeah, this this ring from here to here. Yeah. yeah? Yeah. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well done. You'd have to hide yeah. you have to hide just hide the, the top one and the bottom one. Yeah. For all three of them. Oh, then... look, I'm, you know it's two clicks away, look. Yeah, true. You could just GG it. Yeah, that's that's much faster. So that's probably a better probably a better solution there. Yeah, slide tool is GG. Really? It's good. It's very good. You know, and this sort of modeling, it can be quite tedious, you know, and it's it's a bit marathon-like, you know. Mm. Um, 
I mean, look at all those points. Jesus. Yep, but great results um, take time. So, you know, it's just like you got to have, you got to be like John Wick. You got to just be a force of will. <laughs> That's right. You know, like that. You know, it's a stupid analogy, but you know, it is sometimes just about just keeping going. You know, but then again, you say that, and then like before you know it, like a load of times passed, and yeah. you've got yourself a, a model of a, of something. You know, but setting yourself, um, you know, projects where it's not just a five minute thing or something like that, where you know you're going to be spending a, a long time on it, is yeah. is good. And also, not a cube. You know? You know, cutting into a cube, that's just, it's, well, bl yeah. Blender's notorious for, you know, cutting a corner out of a cube and calling it modeling. But I mean, I'm sure that's what we all did when we started modeling. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, we, we, we sort of made things hard for ourselves. Well, yeah. I mean, I yeah, when, when I first saw it, it you know, when, when I first that? saw the bike, I thought that's a great idea, you know, because it, it's really difficult. You've always got to do things that push you to the next level. You know, these are all personal projects as well. So I need to flatten this area out. The but, flatten you know, the flatten uh, tool is great. It works really well. It, it's. I mean. Cinema Lip doesn't tools. have stuff like this, no. you know, built in. You You've know. got HB. So you're going to you're gonna have to buy HB modeling tools if you want stuff like that. Yep. Um, you know, loop tools, this is free, forgotten tools, straight and stuff like that. It's all very similar to HB. Yep. But, you know, there's some great tools. I find, you know, some things in Blender way better than Cinema 4D. Yeah. Or just more convenient or you know gg slide that's just i mean i use that all the time yeah yeah this is a bit i did the other day as well that, that's amazing that little piece so this was done uh like you were using curves on your exhaust pipe i yep. just did a um i extruded a vertex and and sort of have you ever done it I, I have seen, yeah, I have seen vertex extrusion. Were you able to um, add a add a bevel on the corner? Yes. Yeah. Can you can you give so us a look? So here's what you do. Look, uh, if you do this, let's go curse the world origin. So or you've only got to go add a mesh. Um, let's do a circle, I guess. Triangle fan. Good. I can't zoom in. Here we go. I've got edit mode. Point. So, how did I do this? Uh, I think I selected. Uh, Here you go. Under pressure now. Select this and then just go um, I and then just go delete vertices so you've got one vertice right yep and then we come into three and go extrude extrude that vertex yep like that do that on z and then just go e extrude it again yep coming from a cinema it seems so weird to be able to extrude a vertex yep and then you can go you can bevel it of course e bevel that and roll your wheel to yeah right that's pretty cool add more points the only thing is the difference between that and working with curves obviously is curves have bezier handles so your um the curve is you know is live it's more vector rather than bitmap yeah yeah I'm not saying, not, would, not saying this is yeah. a bad way but it's just another way and then you just grab this in object mode and turn it into a and spline. just go object convert 
to curve. Curve, right. And that's it. And now you have your curve here, and then you just add. Yeah, right. That's cool too. Yeah, that is pretty like good. That. Yeah. That's a good way of doing it. It's very precise. Yeah. So I was showing I was showing I that bevel I was showing that curve bevel tool before that I downloaded the free add-on. But yeah, this is another way to do it without that add-on. Because this is how I would have done pipes before. Yep. You know, pipe work, I would have done convert edge to you know, edge to spline or whatever. Of course, yeah, in cinema. Um, cuz it's easy I like the fact that you can extrude vertices and oh, create yeah. edges. I mean, yeah. that's, you can't do that in Cinema 4D. No, right. That I know of. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now that's brilliant. So, yeah. Do you want to go back to you? Yep. Well, I'm going to wrap up in a sec because I'm um, starting to get a little bit late. Um, let me just come back to yeah, me. Yeah, it's been an hour and 45. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully this hasn't been... Um, Seem monotonous. But, no, no, it's, it's been great. Um, yeah, so I was going to talk a little bit about this, but what I'm going to do is I'll probably do this. Um, uh, I'll do. A, I might do a little bit of a stream this afternoon, um, record another one, and just work a l little bit on this myself, or maybe tomorrow, because um, I'm just going to just kind of undo that. Um, just keep working on this little section a little bit because I've got to. I've got to add all the holes in here. I've got to do all the bulls in there and stitch those bulls in. So there's a few little things to do in there. And I also want to come in and make this. I'm thinking about actually stitching in the Indian logo as well. Um, so that, that'll be a little bit of work. But um, on the actual bike, that's that's what it, that's that's what you it looks clean like. Clean up those um, eight-sided poles that I put in. I I love that. Yeah, actually, that's that's, that's the things of <laughs> that's the things of nightmares. Is these. That's my trademark. I love That's these. Yeah, I've been there. That's right. Yeah, Toby's been there. That's right. So, um, yeah, I might. I, I don't necessarily have to, but um, you know, it's just a bit of fun. So, a little bit of work to do on that, and once that's done, I'll go in and finish the um the exhaust as well. So, uh, but we're getting there. I mean, boom, we're still, you say we're still we're getting there, but. There is still so much to do. I know, but all the little bits we're doing, we've done all the, we, we've pretty much done all the main big bits. I've, I'm going to, next, after that, I'm going to do the vent that sits on the front here. Um, once Toby's finished the engine, he'll probably just crawl crawl into a corner and die. Um, but we do have a lot more to do. We've got the pedals to do and um, all the wiring and, you know, a lot of little bits and pieces. But Yeah, um, pipe work. All the pipe work, yeah. But Speed once that's all done. Sir. Yep, and Toby said we've got to. You said you were going to just change the um, uh, the organisation of the front here because what we've got we we want to give put a um, stand for the bike, and obviously if it's got a stand, then the front wheel will be turned a little slightly. So this whole section will be turned. I want it to look like it's actually sitting uh, up on a stand or upright because of its stand, and I also want at the end to go in and build a whole scene. Um, you know, to see, um, so we can really make this bike look great into some some kind of warehouse or dock or something that making looks... Making it look great. Yeah, making it look great, 12, that's right. Um, mm. So, yeah. So, yeah, lots of work to do, but the idea was to do lots and lots of different little pieces be as a personal project because there's lots and lots of practice. Um, but we're definitely getting there. Uh, it's definitely been a good way of getting comfortable with Blender, though. Ah, yeah. If you want to get good at you know any piece of software, um, just do a project in it because it forces you to to learn. Um, I mean, the first time I opened it, I couldn't even move around the interface. No, I kept using my you Cinema know. 4D shortcuts. But now I'm using the Blender shortcuts in Cinema 4D. So am I. Yeah, so am I. I'm getting. I, I go back into Cinema and it's like a garden with full of weeds. I'm like, oh god, but that's to be expected. Yeah, I haven't had to go back to cinema. I haven't had to sort of cry and go back to cinema yet. So that's good. That's that's a good thing. I even thought about going back to cinema and doing these, um, doing the chamfer on the corners. But I thought, no, I'll, I'll find out a way to do it in Blender. And lo and behold, there was a way to do it. So, um, but let's um, 
wrap up for now. Thanks for staying so long, everyone. We had a few people today. Really appreciate yeah, you thanks. joining us. Yeah, we'll do this again. I can get up early yeah, and Tobe can stay up late. Um, yeah. We'll, we'll, um, we'll keep doing this. Um, oh, but, yeah, do it next week. See if I actually manage to finish that. Yeah, yeah. That bit of engine. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds, sounds like a great idea. So this is going to be on the YouTube channel um, as a recording um, this afternoon. Once again, thanks, and um, we'll see you in the next stream. See you later.